This video is all you need to know about UV unwrapping for the 3D artist. I'll be talking through what unwrapping is and if there are any rules we should follow as 3D artists to make our unwrapping more effective. If you like what I do, then do check out my website and the playlist on this channel for more great content. Also, the Game Dev TV Black Friday sale has started and you can get four courses for the price of around $30. So some great savings to be had there. Check the links in the description for more info. So let's begin by asking what is unwrapping and what are seams? So unwrapping is taking a 3D object and turning it into a 2D map so we can place a texture onto that object. A good example would be how a piece of clothing is like a 3D object, but it's made out of one piece of fabric. The clothing is stitched together and these stitched lines are called seams. It's exactly the same with 3D objects. The UV map tells your 3D program where on your 3D model you would like the textures to go. The next question you may be asking is, does it matter where I put the seams and can I get away with not using them at all when texturing? Well, yes, it does matter where you put a seam because a seam can cause a jump or crookedness in the texture across the model and therefore it breaks the illusion of realism. Like this monkey model, the seam is down the middle around towards the back and you can see the jump in the texture. So using seams can be a bit of a pain and you have to try and hide them and keep them to a minimum over your model. So following a few rules about placement is very important. Can you get away without seams? Well, there are methods of texturing which don't necessarily use seams, and there are methods of texturing where the placement of the seams is not as crucial. For example, if we use texture painting, so painting on the texture ourselves, it doesn't matter so much where the seams are because when painting, the program is able to make it work without any problems. And there's no crookedness or jump to the texture across the seams. You can also project textures using a kind of box projection from all different sides. This, however, isn't without its problems. And where the projection meets each other, you can often get a jump in the texture once again. You can also use procedural texturing techniques which map differently, a bit like box projection. There still comes an issue though if you want to export your textures and model from one program to another. You often need to bake out the textures and that involves marking seams. However, this is similar to texture painting where the program is able to make it work across the seams without the jump and crookedness. Having said that, keeping to simple rules of marking seams will help with any glitches that might happen in that process. So the next question might be, what are we aiming for with our unwrapping or texture maps? And can we do just an automatic unwrap in the program? So within Blender, for example, you can use what's called a smart UV project. Unfortunately, that creates a lot of seams, which means a lot of islands, which are individual areas of the model on your texture map. More seams and more islands means more chance of getting a jump or crookedness in your texture. So a good rule is to create as few seams as possible so we don't get the crookedness or texture jump problems. So with that in mind, we keep the seams and the islands to a minimum. So where should we be marking seams to stop the problems? Well, the first place and most obvious place is where a texture or a color breaks. So in real life, clothing does have a natural seam and you will often see a break in texture on the clothing. So it does happen in real life and with real objects and therefore we can mimic that in our program. Another example would be different panels of a vehicle where some are painted metal and others might be plastic. Now these are commonly built as separate objects so there would be no need to mark seams, but they sometimes can be built as one for low poly games or similar. So again, you would put a seam along the line where the texture breaks from one panel to the other. A third example would be something like a table leg. Where the table legs meet the top, you have a natural break in the texture. So that would be the best place for the seams. Another simple rule is to try and hide your seams. It seems obvious, but it's worth a mention. Try and put your seams in places where the viewer or the audience will not easily see them. So with a table, once again, for an example, the insides of the table legs is the obvious place. How do I know if I have enough seams and enough islands? And this comes down to stretching. If we don't have enough seams, then the texture tries to stretch itself across the model, which then leads us onto the question, how do we stop stretching? Well, for that to happen, we have to make sure that we have enough seams, but we want to place them in the correct places so that we don't have too many and therefore too many islands. So how do we place them in the correct places? 
Well, let's remind ourselves why we have to mark seams. We're trying to map 3D objects to 2D. Therefore, if we don't include seams like I've done with this cylinder here, it just squashes flat and everything stretches as it tries to spread out the shape. With that in mind, we need to mark the seams to break the 3D shapes like this cylinder down into 2D. So we can think about more complex shapes by breaking it down into basic primitives or basic shapes like cylinders and boxes. Take this awkward shape here. I want to unwrap this with as few seams as possible, therefore as fewer islands as possible. So as I said earlier, let's break it down into simple primitives. Here's a cylinder shape, so I can mark the seams like we would a cylinder. And with a cylinder, I think of a tin of food. The middle section has a label going all the way round, so we can simply mark one seam down one side in order to create this so-called label. Then it's just the top and the bottom caps left to cut out. So we do the same for our odd shape here. Here's the cylinder shape at the top. I cut out the two caps, obviously there's none at the bottom, but I cut a seam there anyway, and one down the side for that kind of label section. So what about the middle? Well, that's an obvious box shape. So I can mark this area like I would a box. And when we look at a box, we think about how a cardboard box is made out of one piece of cardboard, we can unwrap a box in the same way. So let's unwrap this box area in the same way. And I'll quickly speed up that process of me marking the seams out here. Within this box area, there's another cylinder. So let's cut out the cylinder using the same techniques. So the two caps, and this time I'll choose the edge on the very upper inside. That's slightly hidden. That will create our label section. So now the whole shape is unwrapped and we can press our unwrap button. And we can see now that the texture has been spread across relatively evenly and we don't have too much stretching. I could even cut this down a bit further to make the most of my UV space by cutting the box into further islands. And you can see how that changes the UV mapping on our shape here. Now let's add a texture to that so you can see what it looks like and it seems to be working well. Let's finish off by looking at the monkey once again. Now when the monkey is unwrapped, you can see the ears. They're a bit like a cylinder, but this has actually been unwrapped a little bit more like a box unwrapped. So just one UV seam to break up that 3D shape. With this technique, you will end up getting a little bit of stretching, but it does minimize the amount of islands. The eyes are obvious areas that can just be unwrapped by themselves. They are actually a separate part of the mesh. Then comes the skull and you can see it's got a seam across the top and one going all the way around the back of the shape. And that kind of splays it out. Once again, a bit like the box unwrap. And that top section is to help spread it out without too much stretching. So that finishes this guide to unwrapping, why we need it, where to mark seams and so forth. Do keep an eye out for more videos on the subject. Do also comment below any thoughts that you might have. I hope you learned something from this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.